Is your checkering pressed like this, but you want it to be cut like this? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how with a few simple tools, you can convert pressed checkering to cut checkering. When thinking of pressed or impressed checkering, as it's also called, think of making waffles. The waffle iron or press impresses its pattern into the material, which in this case is batter. What you end up with is an object, whether that be a waffle or wood, that holds the pattern on it. The difference between pressed and cut checkering is that on one, the diamonds or pyramids are pressed into the wood, while on the other, material is cut and removed so the diamonds or pyramids point up out of the wood. Cut checkering is a very time intensive process which is sped up with the use of power tools. Pressed checkering was introduced to speed up production and cut costs. That gap has been bridged by laser cut checkering, which is fast, precise, and efficient, all while giving you a better grip on the gun. In my opinion, cut checkering is good. Laser cut checkering is good and getting better. Pressed checkering is terrible. I think all it really does is give a outline of the checkering patterns and shapes that are available. That's about it. I don't find any grip improvement whatsoever. And that's why I'm converting this pressed checkered stock to a cut checkered stock. Here's the tools I'm gonna to be using today. An X-Acto knife with a somewhat rounded tip. A handful of checkering tools, a toothbrush, some wood stain, and a finish of some sort. The specifics on the checkering tools that I use. One is a border tool. Then I have a pointer short 60 degrees, a pointer long 60 degrees, pointer short 90, and pointer long 90 degrees. Pointer 60, pointer 90. One is to get depth, the 60 degree, one is to widen the channels, the 90 degree. These are all from Gunline Tools. I wanna to demo really quick the process that we're going to run through on my waffle here because the pressed checkering on the stock is a little hard to see just because it's so much smaller. This is representative of our X-Acto knife. This is representative of our checkering tool. On a pressed checkered stock, you have the indentations and dams. With your X-Acto knife, we're going to make a slice through the dams. You can go all these in one direction if you want. You can go this direction and then this direction. Doesn't matter. Once you've sliced through those dams, you then take your checkering tool and you'll slice through and burrow out, hollow out those channels. We'll do another slice in this one, this one, this one, and this one. Get rid of your sawdust, and what you'll be left with is this point sticking up here in the middle. This point then becomes your pyramid or diamond that is poking up. So that's the whole process in a nutshell. Last couple things before we get started. This is a very slow, monotonous process. If you try to go fast, you will mess it up. Regardless of speed, you're gonna still have some mistakes. You're gonna have some runovers. You're gonna have some, maybe some line hopping. Uh, take your time. This stock set came to me as a very rough, well-worn, cracked, scuffed beater stock 
that I refinished and kind of did as a trial to see if this even works. So maybe get yourself a test piece if you want. Um, if not, just take your time. And for the sake of your eyes, your neck, and your hands, take some breaks every once in a while. Just do it. So I'm going to start with quote unquote, the, the master lines and the master lines are what comes off of these points here. And as you can see on this one, it's a little thin between the, the wood and the checkering. Like these slots are a lot thinner than this row or this row. That happens occasionally, just the way that the machine and the dies and stuff line up with what they're doing. So give a, a decent bit of tension or pressure on there because you need to break through those walls or just give yourself enough of a channel to slice through there. And kind of kind of correct a little bit if you're getting towards one side. And you'll find the angle and the lighting and everything that works best for you. All right. <clears throat> so if you can, it's kind of tough to see, but we're going to slice all the way down that one. And then I'll take my 60 degree cutter and just kind of start wherever in your line. And just a very light push just to find that track. And you'll want to follow those slices. Back to the knife, and we'll cut this crossing one. And hopefully you can see it. You can see these little tick marks through each one of these dams here that's what your cutter follows it tries to fall in that little channel and just very very lightly so as you can see on this one or in this way i've just barely channeled out the top of those just enough to give future passes a channel to follow because if you just start trying to you know channel through one of these you can you can get off course real easy so then i will take my 60 degree cutter set in one of those slices very lightly follow it
So off camera, I went ahead and ran this other side over here as well. Uh, it's a little tough to do with a camera in your way, uh, especially when you need to find good lighting and good angles. But as you can see, a pattern has developed in there. And I guess at this point, you could you know, just do a certain pattern if you wanted. You don't have to do the whole thing. Um, you could just do you know, certain diamonds or however you want to do it. It's your stock, do whatever you want. But uh, I did want to show you in running this line here, it sort of jumped out of my groove here. So I was going down this way. My cutter, the checkering tool, kind of jumped up a little bit and ran along that dam for a little bit. Um, it's superficial enough that once we get through all our stages, that won't show up at all, but it's just real easy to jump out of a track and keep going. And since it's small enough and minute enough, it still kind of looks like you're in the track, but just cause you're so close until you get to a point where you're like, oh, I'm obviously not in those cuts. Uh, course correct and go back to it. I'm actually going to uh, complete the uh, the border here uh, and it's just the same process trace cut trace cut and then I'll go to every other All right, so these uh, these lines where you're getting a little shorter as you get down into this point, that is where your uh, short, as opposed to your long, cutter is going to come into play. That way, when you're using your long, you're not gouging outside of the area that is checkered. You could also use, if it gets real tight, just continue to carve out with your X-Acto knife. So that is every other line, except for a couple right in here. It went every three, just the way the pattern started to, to line up. Before I get to those crossing lines, I'm going to take a break. Just do it. We'll now start cutting our uh, crossing lines. All right, so I've got just about every other going this way. Got just about every other going that way. And I'm gonna take another break. All right, let's get back to it. Since I have every other line going in both directions completed, I'll now go in and just fill in the rest. But as you can see, lighting plays a key role. Right here, it doesn't really look like anything has happened. But when you change lighting and angle, you can see certain patterns. You can also see under this lighting condition right here how easy it is to potentially get lost in what is going on.
So I've got them all done going that direction. Now every other that direction. And this is where it becomes really important that as you work on this one, where you're left with every other, that you routinely hold it up to, to this angle to see that your lines are connecting and for one to see where your lines are. Because when you're going like this, it starts to get real hard to see those lines. All you really have left is shiny spots. So there's like a bridge, a bridge, a bridge, a bridge, a bridge. So you know that's a line that you're gonna cut through. Here's your line you already have cut to kind of direct you. And then you've got bridge, 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 bridge. You're gonna cut through all those line you've already cut. Cut through all of these bridges. And this one had two in a row. So you're gonna cut through this one as well. And then a line you've already cut. Cut through all these bridges, so on and so forth. All right, now that we have lines cut on all of them in both directions, we have diamonds in the rough. These diamonds need to be cleaned up and the trenches need to be deepened. So we're gonna go over the whole thing again, getting a uniform depth with our 60 degree cutter. But first, another break. All right, so now that you've got uh, grooves established, we're just gonna go through every one and kind of get it down to a uniform depth. Uh, maintain vigilance though, because if you're going too fast, you can still kind of jump, jump a track. In this stage, I'll, uh, I'll kind of chase out the, the ends first like where the line terminates on its on its edge and then I'll go back and and run through the middle and this is going to be the stage where you probably have the most sawdust so I just keep a toothbrush handy or just a close-up view of what we're doing here you can see this line right here the bottom of that line is starting to become all the same color. The line above it, dark spot, light spot, dark spot, light spot, dark spot, light spot. The dark spot within the line, not the top of the diamond, within the line is a depth that we haven't got down to yet. And so I've been going through these. You can see a lot of the bottoms of these lines are starting to lighten up become all the same level and a lot of patchwork in here that still needs to be done and you don't necessarily have to do, get all this in you know one pass a little bit of time it's a lot easier to take material off than it is to put it back on so we got all the ends done now running through the middle. All right, so we have a relatively even depth on most all of them. We've got some good diamond shapes going on now. And most of the dark spots that you see, there's going to be some that are in channels, but most of those are now the tops of the diamonds that are flat. Uh, these are relatively flat. You can take the time now to get the depth even if there's any spots that are kind of lagging 
mainly the corners. Uh, there might be some stuff in the middle. This line, this line right here uh, is a little uneven. Work on that a little bit. All right, got some lines cleaned up. Border, a little more defined. And now we will move from our 60 degree cutter to our 90 degree cutter. And if you only have a 60, I mean, you can stop here. The grip on these is better than pressed checkering. But what a 90 is now going to do is instead of cutting deeper at this angle, it's just going to flare out and in essence, put a sharper point on the top of the diamond. And on this pass, your valleys, trenches, whatever, are pretty much defined enough that you're probably not going to jump out of the channel. But I'm going to do a few rows and then show you the difference. Instead of just a few rows, I did half to see a comparison. And straight on, you can't really tell a difference. Feel-wise, these are way more pointed. And if you look at this angle, you can kind of see my line right there on where a lot of those flat tops now no longer exist. There are some, but that's just due to how deep you can go on the wood. You can only go so deep or so wide, but that 90 degree cutter gives you a lot better purchase on those diamonds after pointing them up. So these are kind of flat on the top. And there's still some up along here, but for the most part, those are all pointy diamonds. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this other side and then you guessed it, take a break. If you have made it to this point without a bunch of overruns, talking something like this right here, something like that, there's a couple up there as well, a few of them here and there. You could at this point just go to the stain and whatever finish you want. A way to kind of hide some of those if you're at this point and you don't want a border is to take your X-Acto knife, kind of scrape up on that edge. Plane those down a little bit. A border helps to uh, maybe take the eye off of those or hide those a little bit, especially depending on the border that you use. So I have this bordering tool, kind of a V slash concave. So I'll take my border tool, put one edge of it in my current border, and just kind of like most of this project, lightly lightly scrape. Just careful not to, to come out of your border because then you start going all over the place. But that just gives me a nice uniform distance. You're going to have some variance. So like this is a little wider than this, depending on how your inner border ran. Got a little, a little sloppy here, but we'll clean that up. Um, you can't take the tool past the corners right here because you'll run through this corner if you do. So I will go ahead and now freehand with my X-Acto knife these corners. All right, so up here on this top corner, I'm gonna find that line and just kind of run it straight up. It'll 
be cleaned up with our cutting tools. Stop short. Don't go, don't go to where you think you need to go. Stop a little short. Go a little bit with this one. Stop a little short, 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 short until they connect. That way you'll know you'll have that connection there and not overrun your line. And they will meet right there. All right, here's our corners that meet up. And now we will take our 60 degree cutter very lightly uh, trace out those lines from the border tool and the exacto knife and stop short of the corners because we will come back and do something different with those We're going to draw this corner right here. So normally when we're using our cutters, we're cutting on the push stroke. If you want, you can turn these around. So it's on the pull stroke. There's a, a method called hook and pull, where if you do that, you go to the corner, you hook, and then you pull. If you don't want to turn these around, you just kind of do the opposite. You hook into that corner and push. And you would do that both ways. So you're starting at the corner. That way it's a nice clean corner and you don't risk the chance of overrunning on your border. All right, so I'm gonna drag back a little bit, find that corner. Angle it, dig down a little bit, push out. So here's that corner I just did. Nice and sharp there on it and no run over. Okay, corners are done. And now I'll go back to my normal 60 degree pointer. I'm going to deepen all these lines to a relatively uniform depth. Okay, now that we're down to a uniform depth, I'm going to repeat the corner process of kind of hooking and pushing with the, the 90 degree cutter. And then with your 90 degree cutter, make all your connecting lines between the corners uniform. At this point, you can deepen or widen the line with your 60 or 90 degree cutter. If you have another side completed already, you can match it up with that side. Uh, another optional step here the, is that if you do have those runovers, you can actually kind of scrape this whole inner border area. So just something uh, kind of scrape and blend those runovers a little bit. And when I say blend, it's blending the actual scrapes. Uh, stain will also blend them in the, the next few steps, but this will just take that, that gouge out. All right, when you get all your lines how you want them, go ahead and make sure they're all nice and cleaned out. No sawdust in there. And then whatever stain you want, you match it to the others. Uh, this is a little, like a mixed old stain that's pretty dark. Sorry about that. Didn't lock my tripod. And one thing about stain is you can't do another take. <laughs> 
So just keep uh, just keep spreading that around, and where you don't want it on the other finished portion, you'll just wipe that excess. If you do want some more in there, you want a little darker, just go ahead and add some more. And then on the last go around, I'll wipe. The excess, clean my brush off a little bit, and when you've got a decently clean brush, you can kind of just go back through, and your brush will pick up the excess within the checkering. Just run smooth strokes down the lines. Because you don't want it to pool in there and sit and dry in a little pool. We have now been stained. Let that sit for a little bit until dry, and then we'll get some finish on there. Applying finish is very similar to the stain. Um, I'm just using True Oil. Just going to get a little bit on that toothbrush, and you're just going to spread it around. Get in all the nooks and crannies. And this is done pretty sparingly. I'm just wanting enough to give it a coating, soak in a little bit, nothing too thick. Like the stain, you don't want it to pool up in any of those valleys, cut lines, whatever you want to call them. Adjust it to the light so you can see if there's any pooling, if there's any soaking in and you need to redab, get it wet again. So when you're happy with where it's at, you can go ahead and clean off your brush over it a couple times just to get all the excess out of there. And then go ahead and wipe the excess off around it. Give it a look over and I'll let that dry and give you a final look. All right, here's the final look with how they came out. I did each of these in stages. I think this might have been the first, second, third, and then the fourth, the last one. They all got better. My first one was uh, maybe this one. A little rough, you know, some runovers. You learn some things along the way. Hopefully I portrayed all of that information clearly that you can understand and, and get the best result the first go around. But regardless, I am happy with how it turned out. Is it perfect? No. Is it better? Substantially. Uh, Grip-wise, look-wise, I just think it's, it's better overall. As you saw, and maybe as you experience, this is, like I said, a very long, tedious, process but i think it's it's well worth it if you think i earned it i would really appreciate a, a like a share uh, maybe even go ahead and hit that subscribe button uh, it does it does really help me out good luck on your projects and thanks for watching i'll see you on the next one